you for the follow. Good morning. Some call you blue. Welcome. Sun. Always a pleasure to have you here. Trash Panda. Brolivia. Yeah. It's five fifty. Thank you. 
Morning, Nito. Vic Villion. Vic Villion. Vic Villain. Vic Villain. I'm sure that's how it's pronounced. Hello. Whoever you are. Thank you. I like this hat as well. Gus, thank you for the subscription. Unfortunately, I don't stream enough to make it worthwhile, but uh, we appreciate your patronage nonetheless. You subscribe because of Cactus, that's what it took. Fair enough. Hey, you could have had Cactus on your show. There's nothing stopping, uh... There's nothing stopping you from taking Cactus first. I don't know. I don't know, Nito. Let's see how this goes first. <laughs> Let's... I'm the test dummy for, for people to interview in the community. This is live. There's no edits here. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, go back and fix things. <laughs> Get one shot at this. And if it sucks, I'm just screwed. It's all right. You guys watch anyways. If you don't, no. I'll have to go back to my day job. I quit my day job this morning because I knew this glitch cactus interview was going to put me on the map. This is my Pulitzer, ep uh, Pulitzer Prize episode here. Emmy nominated. Interviewing a guy who spent 40 bucks to put blue char on Times Square. Yeah, I know I need to update my Discord thing, but I don't. The, I think that's just tied into the overlay. I don't think I have like a separate... I mean, I could fix it, but... That requires effort. And I only remember to fix it when I'm live. As soon as this goes off, my mind is elsewhere. So maybe, maybe at some point, I'll remember to get it fixed.
Nifsky is at uh, World 5, Level 2 in this world record run. I'll watch this real quick. listening on a plane fair enough i interviewed rizza uh while she was at the boston airport at the end of shine last year these kinds of things go pretty good at an airport while you're waiting to kill time for your layover or whatever your delayed flight You had to drive four and a half hours from an airport? Hello, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Whenever you're listening to this, whether it be live or a VOD, Twitch or YouTube, or Spotify, while you are celebrating Shiver's 100th Splatfest victory in a row, nervously waiting to see if I will DM you this week to let you know that you're going to be banned from low ink. Spending $40 to get an image of Blue Chara on Times Square and causing the community to explode in the process. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this. Uh, unless I don't. I We are officially 13 days away from Pop Gun Jr. setting foot on planet Earth outside of my wife's tummy. This is very exciting times for us here at the Pop Gun household. Um, we're, we're assuming it's going to go all the way to the 13 days. We, we You never really know with these things. Um, but uh, I, I'm planning... <laughs> on taking part in low ink this weekend and uh but if i'm commentating grand finals and all of a sudden you just hear me say oh, bye and and i'm just gone you know why we're 
we're we're going to the hospital but i'm pretty sure we're pretty sure that everything's going to be all right with that um planning on doing the popcast next week as well no changes with that um but uh, of course if there are any major life updates we will keep everyone informed along the way we're super excited um i know miss pop gun is ready to uh as she says evict our son <laughs> from her body at this point it's uh he's a he's a big baby he is a big baby and we're uh there's not a whole lot of room in there for him so we're kind of excited to get him out of there and roaming around the planet earth i am planning on the pop cast still going on even though when i'm on paternity leave no i'm not going to be running the podcast and figuring out how to raise a newborn at the same exact time that's not going to work the uh the first six weeks that i get off of paternity leave um with my wife to figure out this whole newborn thing is going to be really crazy and hectic for us we we understand that um not going to be doing low ink not going to be doing proving grounds not going to be doing anything except focusing on baby stuff however the podcast is going to go on i already have two people lined up to be guest hosts um they'll host full episodes of the podcast going up there's some other people i want to reach out to to do uh some episodes of the podcast uh by the way nito I, you're joking i'm kind of not i might dm you a little bit later this week to see if you'd be interested in doing your low ink preview next month on the podcast just just kind of throwing that out there if there's anybody else out there and you're like super into some sort of topic and you want to come on and host the podcast feel free to reach out to me um i might say no but the worst thing that i could do is say no i'm not going to cuss you out i am looking for people to keep uh to guest host this show the only the rules i have is try to do it live if you want to do a video of it fine but you're still gonna still like put the video out on my channel at the usual time that we do it um and you know try not to drop any f-bombs i've come close several times i haven't done it yet and other than that i don't care i'm not going to be like you have to talk about this i'm not going to be like you have to follow a certain uh guideline that i have or anything like that this is the the podcast is the the show of the people this is your guys's show this is the only thing the only reason this show has been quote unquote successful is because of the idiots in chat, um, which is why I'm bringing on in a idiot in chat live onto the show today. We love to give you guys the voice. So if you want to keep the podcast going, you want to be a guest host, you want to contribute in some way, feel free to reach out to me this week. This is the week to do it. Next week is not the week to do it. So this is your uh, this is your opportunity. Take it for what it is. News of tournaments may be of interest to the casual listener of the podcast. It's Low Week Week. Make sure you guys sign up for it. 115 teams already signed up. The vast majority of them have their splash tags entered correctly. Make sure you sign up before the end of Friday. If you don't have a team and you still want to participate, fill out a sub application. We verified the sub applications at the end of registration um, on Friday. Now, there's also a proving grounds going on this Friday. No, I am not. I, I'm 100% hands off of proving grounds at this point. Toasty and Wolf are head TOs for that event. I've completely turned it over to them. It's their show. They know how to run it the way that we want proving grounds to be run. It's still going to be a fantastic event. Um, but I'm not going to have any hand in this upcoming proving grounds number 17 this Friday. I'm still going to be wrapping up low ink stuff at that time. But since I'm hands off low uh, proving grounds for the next month or so, yeah, there's there's no reason why it can't run at the same time during low ink. Why not? Low ink preview is still going to be on Friday though, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Still same time, a few hours before registration ends. I already know who my number one team is going to be, even though I haven't looked at everybody who's signed up yet. I know who's going to win this one. I was correct last month, and I'm going to be two for two. So check in on Friday if you want to figure out who's going to win this upcoming tournament. Today, we're going to be recapping Little Squid League number 31, the biggest 
little squid league in the history of the universe. How old is the universe? Like billions of years. The earth is like 3.8.3 million or billion, something like that. In all of those years, there's never been a bigger little squid league than the one that you saw last Saturday. So we're going to be talking about that today on the podcast. But first. Nobody gets their guest on through all of the nonsense faster in a live show than I do. And it looks like we have somebody who isn't going to be sideways this time like the last time that we had Hammer on. So welcome into the podcast, Competitive player, up and coming YouTuber slash streamer, commentator, and somebody who has 40 less dollars than they had a week ago. Cactus, how's morale today? Fantastic. But besides my voice being like pretty shot, uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. And it's a pleasure to be on the podcast today. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's a <laughs> pleasure to be on here. Hey, I'm on here all the time. I can't believe it took us 185 episodes to get you on here it's it's been long overdue your voice is yeah. shot hell yeah it is i went back and watched mm -hmm. the vod of grand finals from like <laughs> game pre-game on you and magic were like screaming the entire yeah. time it was it yeah. that hype in the venue it, it the crowd and the morale <laughs> was just absolutely out of this world i, I i'm i'm gonna say it for me personally but I've never had that kind of experience at a land before. I went to Riptide and Big House last year uh, in 2022, went to LTC this year, uh, went to both Big Dapples, and I, I've never felt just that hype, that type of atmosphere. It, it was incredible. It was incredible. Well, it definitely translated into what I was seeing um, both <laughs> yesterday and on the VOD. Uh, Glitch Cactus, where does that come from? Um, so wow, where does that come from? Okay, so back in the end, towards the end of 2021, um, I was going through a bit of a, like a, I'll call it a rebrand phrase, and I went through by a really ridiculous childish name that I won't say, because it's <laughs> really childish, um, and I didn't want to do, do that anymore, and I wanted to change what I was doing for content purposes. I fell in love with Splatoon all over again because I wanted to do something that I just loved doing. And that, of course, was playing games and then also trying to make content and then also maybe join competitive. And here I am now with that. Um, and I went through like a, a list on my phones. I'm sure on my phone, I'm sure I could find it somewhere of just a bunch of different names I thought of. And honestly, I just came up with it. It sounded cool and I went with it. So what did it make the cut? What what was the second place? <laughs> uh, uh, second place I believe was, I think it was Trash Panda. <laughs> yeah, there's someone in chat called Trash Panda. Really? Right. <laughs> yeah, there was earlier. All right, you Incredible. made you made the right Trash Panda yes. glitch cactus. Yeah, I, I can see the uh, yes the appeal to that. All yeah. right, I yeah. I want to I want to spend the vast majority of this. Talking about gridlock. Absolutely. That's, that's the important thing. That's how we got into this. Yeah. However, <laughs> I, I, I can't bring you on here. It'd be a disservice to both you and the idiots in chat if oh, I didn't absolutely. bring up this question. So I'm just, I'm just going to come out and ask this question. Uh, what is wrong with you? There... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pop Gun, if I could list you the things that are wrong with me. But that would, list would go on for a while. Well, let's, uh, let's back it up to this. Where did the yeah. idea to... Like, how did you even know that you could get an image up on the billboard at Times Square? So, uh, a good friend of mine and a previous teammate named Ashik uh, messaged me and a couple others in a group chat we have about someone putting Olimar in Times Square for $40. And... Uh, when I saw that, I looked more into it, and anybody can do it. You have to follow a couple guidelines, but they're, they're, they're pretty broad, and you can you pretty much get almost anything on there. And I, I forget if I was looking at Twitter at the time, and just Blue Chara came on my uh, came up on my feed, 
but I jokingly said, I was like, what if I put Blue Chara in Times Square for 15 seconds for $40? Now, we weren't sure, obviously, so I decided to you know, post it on Twitter, not thinking much of it. I was like, oh, this would be kind of funny. And then it started getting a lot of traction. And a lot of people really wanted this to happen. So I did what any sane person would, well, I guess the insane person would do <laughs> and say, well, you know, I mean, if, if the community wants it, I do have technically a PayPal and we could technically raise the $40. Top Gun and idiots in chat within 15 minutes, I had $40 in my bank account. 15 minutes you had it. It was covered. all it took. Yep. It was covered. And I went and within that, and with t within 10 more minutes, I submitted the photo tweaked it a bit to make sure to credit the artist obviously you know obviously respect your artists correct um and uh i got the email confirmation that said congratulations saturday morning <laughs> your image will be on a billboard in times square for new york city to see now could you do this at any time or my wife was thinking it was some sort of like times square takeover like it's like it's a certain time frame to where you could do something like this like i couldn't so, yeah or, or go on so there are time slots that you have to choose from. Um, when I was going through the list, um, there were different days you could choose from. I'm not sure how far along you can pick. Uh, I chose Saturday for the obvious reason. Uh, gridlock. There's going to be plenty of people in at, at that, you know, Love Splatoon that are going to be there for the event. Uh, plus also, like, I knew I was going to be there, so I had to see it in person. <laughs> um, but yeah, there were select time slots. And the time I picked was actually the earliest time that you could pick in the morning. Besides that, everything was like a little bit later. There was like an 11 o'clock slot, 12 o'clock. And I knew gridlock started at 12. So I wanted to give it just enough time for me or anybody else that wanted to go to Times Square to see it can see it in person. Were there a bunch of other, like what was the other things that was sandwiched between? Were they actual ads or was there just like other memes um, going on? Um, When I first got there, I got there roughly like a half hour beforehand. So 9.30 EST. Um, it was, it was just all post Malone. <laughs> I think it was just ad space that they took over. So all you saw okay. was tons of that. And then after I am pretty sure at that time, because before that there was, I'm pretty sure it's probably their ad time for whatever else, but to start off, I guess the day for whatever anybody wanted to post, it was blue Chara. And then after that, people were putting like selfie things, videos they made, et cetera. Okay. So that's, there's the. You post the picture of it up there on Times Square, I believe, a couple of days ago. And a lot mm -hmm. of the quote retweets were, look at all these people that are there watching it. But I'm starting to think yeah. the other people that are there are probably in the same boat you are. They put mm -hmm. something else on and they're waiting yeah. for their turn. Okay, so it's not probably, yeah. hundreds of people gathering around ready to see a blue chart image. No, but that would have <laughs> been really funny. <laughs> if no, all that whole area was just compiled of Splatoon players to watch Blue Chara. Um, but also because it was pretty much like a hot spot for like uh, tourism. There were just a lot of people there just sightseeing, just taking a minute to like see things. Also, the average New Yorker just probably crossing by um, looking up, seeing blue chara on the screen oh, hey what I, the I, I would love that? yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest i went on twitter an hour after just to see if anybody was like what is am i looking at in times square right now but well, unfortunately if, i came to know the test if you were looking at twitter the few days leading up to it you got some really bizarre things it started off with yeah. oh this is funny oh this mm -hmm. is embarrassing and then stretched yeah. into this wild conspiracy theory about something not even related to anything yeah. originally um, but once the actual image got out, I think the vast majority of us were like, that is hilarious yeah. that it got pulled. Look, you, we, we talk a lot on the podcast about combing through the crap on Twitter and get to the actual story. I think mm -hmm. the actual story here is that you can get something on Times Square for $40. That seems really cheap. And I get it's only 15 seconds, but no, th yeah. that you got more than 15 seconds out of that one yeah. thing that that's my yeah. takeaway from that yeah absolutely i mean i i'll just let like twitter do the talking for it really because i mean my phone would not process twitter properly that whole week last week <laughs> I, the, the notifications, Noti notifications were beyond <laughs> yeah um <laughs> it, it was crazy I, funny enough i am planning on making a funny mr b style video of <laughs> 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 i swear 
Because oh. it was just, it's just so, it's perfect. It, it feels like it was a Mr. Beast video for $40. <laughs> this, this is where we've come as a society. You know what? So, so yeah. be it. This is the, uh, this is the community we deserve. All right. There, there was a, a tournament, a side event to the Blue Chara thing going on yeah, this yeah. past weekend. Absolutely. Um, so you were there for Metro Inc.'s Gridlock tournament. Yep. Uh, you correct. said you went to the past two Big Dapples beforehand That's this correct. one. Um, did you play in this one? I know you commentated. Did you play at all? I did play. I did play. And for anybody in chat that may have watched the entire stream, I did jump out of my chair a couple times for some uh, clutch moments on stream. Because uh, they had that live, they had that live cam there, and uh, yeah, competing was amazing too. They did have the live cam, and they shot to it at the right times. You did see a lot yeah. of people jump out. Um, so, like you mentioned, you've been to Low Tide City, you've been to Riptide, you've been to Big House, um, mm -hmm. because we've we've gone out to the, a bar together. The last yes, time that is Big correct. House. Yes. Um, so, so those are like quote unquote majors that we got yes. compare this one to those other three events. Like, cause I personally, I haven't been to something like, mm -hmm. uh, like gridlock. So, so it let me know what I'm missing that I'm not mm -hmm. getting at the other ones. Okay. Um, I mean, the biggest difference was probably the, uh, probably the, the team size, the amount of teams that signed up, the amount of players, um, I dare I say maybe the amount of spectators, but the hype felt just as, as the same and just as real. The excitement was there. The spacing, I will say, for the venue was pretty appropriate for the amount of people we did have, both uh, player-wise and uh, spectator-wise. Um, uh, and I, everything just felt so smooth. I mean, there's not nothing too different besides the lo location, obviously, and the types of people that maybe were there. Um, but I, I just, something about just the atmosphere that, you know, New, New Yorkers bring to that brought to gridlock. It's just, it felt so different. I don't know what it had to describe it, but it just felt like an incredible atmosphere that I didn't feel at riptide and I didn't feel at low tide city. It's just, I'm not sure. It, it just, maybe because I'm me, it was a little bit more involved, but it, it felt just so different, but in a good way. Now you use the term appropriate when you're describing the size of the venue, just so mm -hmm. I got a gauge of things, what would be the term you would use for the size that low tide city was this year? <laughs> um, I think for low tide city with the numbers that we had at that event, the room could have been slightly bigger. I'd say, um, or a little more spacious. I think is the right word I would use because, uh, it was hard to move at low tide city for those of you that may have went mm -hmm. um you can maybe agree uh but i felt like i was always you know saying excuse me pardon me you know mind if i get through um you can also kind of say the same when it came to like watching players play at the tables it's just crowds were just formed and it was hard to walk through a lot of times uh but at gridlock it felt comfortable you weren't really like shoulder to shoulder you had space to squeeze on by and, you know, whether it was to go towards the bar to grab a drink or grab some food, or if it was to go watch some players play or find a seat in the, in the uh, audience to watch the players on stage. So the, the venue itself, it's, uh, it's, it's like a gaming area already. Like all the other yeah. events, they just rent out a gaming hall and build it all there. The, the, mm. uh, the gridlock thing, it was all there. There was a bar as well, like, like yeah, near so the area or. So when you first walk into the building, um, there's like a counter to your left and then there's also like a seating area. Um, and then on the right, there's like a bar and then more seating area. And then there's a hallway, uh, if you can use straight, that leads to the wide open space that we had for the stage, uh, the players to sit in the audience for spectators or other players that just want to watch, uh, the uh, commentator couch. And then there, were also, there was also a separate room for the remainder, the remaining sets to play in, I think it was, let's see, two tables and then a back wall that had like two more tables for four, like four and four, so eight setups as well. So it th this venue is designed for gaming events. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what California's event was like as well. And we're, that's what we're not getting at some of these other major yeah. events. They're just giant open rooms in their building, which is fine. 
but you get a lot of technical issues. Was there any, like, any of those awkward, like, oh, 20 minute delay here, or this person can't talk to their teammate sitting right next to him kind of thing? Uh, or Funny enough, I believe there's only one real delay issue that took about 20 minutes, and it was at a player's Nintendo Switch for some reason was just causing problems and not, not like connecting at all. Um, I think the way around it, funny enough, was they used an amiibo, if that makes any sense. I didn't get too much detail about it, but it did stall that set for roughly like 20, 30 minutes. They used the amiibo to like change their their clothes from one thing to another. Because I know Devi does yeah. that. I th yeah, I think that might have been what it was. Um, I'm not sure if it was like an issue with that, like trying to process like uh, like the, the game gear or if it was yeah. that... Um, something like that but yeah so there you go i mean that's just another thing you don't really think about it's like oh yeah. wait there's no this place is built for gaming so there's less mm. issues throughout the course of the tournament that we're kind of used yeah. to seeing there what about the uh the social scene what's what's the nightlife like did people just stay at the venue the whole time or was there some oh, sort yeah. of place everyone went to uh, it was mainly everyone staying at the venue. I mean, get, huge shout out to all the TOs and production uh, for this event because they had a lot of great side events. I believe there was a table turf event. I'm not sure if it happened. We had the Sbarros versus every other pizza uh, event after uh, the first day of both waves, which was really entertaining. Um, I left uh, before that on day one. I left a little bit later on day two, but it was really just everyone just kind of hanging out at the venue, talking, chilling, relaxing, um, just uh, enjoying the company. Sabaro, like the it's the, the <laughs> I could get that at my local mall. What that's what people were bragging about. That pizza, um, it's pizza, right? I, I, it's it's pizza. I, if you want to blame anyone for that, I blame Pico. That's not uh, a thing. <laughs> art, that you could get Sabaro at any mall in America. That's not a New York authentic thing. All right, yeah. whatever. Uh, P Pico <laughs> was very adamant about calling it the best pizza that there was. Uh, and, and to be fair, okay. it proved in, in a in a Splatoon uh, best of three. Uh, him and his team ended up taking the winner spot. So congratulations to them. I guess they proved their point. <laughs> To the person in chat who doesn't know what Sabaro is, just walk around your airport. You'll eventually land into one, whatever state that you're in. Um, so commentary. You commentated grand yes. finals for this thing. I think you did another mm -hmm. set as well. Most yes. commentary we have, we like to use the term buttoned up. Oh, we're behind a desk. We're looking at the camera. We're, we're official. Or this, mm -hmm. is, this is serious time. Even though I don't think we actually do that, we still use the term buttoned up for whatever reason. You're sitting yeah. on a couch. How mm -hmm. th yeah. is that? Does that put you in a different mindset? Were you told to like be more, more like couch co like 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 loose style or anything uh, like that? All they really said was, "Here's where you'll be sitting. Have fun." <laughs> no, no different than what I was told at Low Tide City to to commentate. Um, but it, it was just I don't know. It felt. I don't know what maybe if it was just because it was grand finals, which by the way, I wasn't originally supposed to commentate grand finals. Uh, Vic and I were supposed to originally commentate losers uh, side of finals or the bracket, but we ended up uh, kind of upsetting some sets and uh, our seating. So uh, we kind of messed up the order of that, but we ended up being able to commentate with magic and uh and kermit the frog yes. <laughs> uh, he's, he's here for those in chat. He's here. Don't worry. <laughs> made it here. back safe <laughs> made it home um yeah god forbid um but yeah it was it was great just being able to just kind of like i just just kind of relax on a couch i guess i mean it, it didn't feel too different if it was being at a table but i think it allowed for a little bit more room to be more hyped i will say there were a couple of times where i jumped out of my out of the seat <laughs> of the couch because they were the sets were just incredible i mean it, it was like it, it was an experience that I've never felt um, commentating before. Well, that's 
part of the point you were getting at earlier was the atmosphere being a little bit higher than what you've seen at some of the other major lands. Well, that's because the grand finals at all the other lands have been garbage. <laughs> then three zero sweeps across the board. Oh, gay. Okay, here's your another yeah. participation trophy for signing up Starburst. Congratulations. Mm. This yeah. one was a best of seven that went to a game seven. Uh, yes. How was it commentating that set? Did it because Sonder was undefeated up to that point? Did you get That's the correct. sense that it was going to be an actual competitive set going into it? Um, I had a feeling because uh, Common Senseless was eight and one, so they only lost one set. I'm not sure to who. I'd have to check the bracket again. Uh, but they only lost one set, so I knew this was going to be an entertaining set. Um. I personally was kind of hoping for the bracket reset, I won't lie. I was just having so much fun commentating uh, at, with that set that if, if it went to a bracket reset, uh, I wouldn't have been too surprised. But uh, I'm glad it took to a game seven and wasn't just a one-sided um, one sided set. Because if it was, I'm sure it would have been like Low Tide City or Riptide or any event that Starburst ends up going to. If it went to a bracket reset, it would just be Vic commentating the rest of it because you and Magic <laughs> would not have survived another yeah. best of seven set there. Yeah. Um the there were a lot of, of big Splatoon celebrities there. Yes. Who did yes. who's the coolest person you met? Oh, uh, you can't make me pick like you that. <laughs> put you on the spot here. There were so you know uh, there were so many great ones. I mean, obviously. There was dude, there was Milana, we had J Moji, Light Laser was there, obviously Vic Villain was there. Um I saw Keen says good morning was there, uh, which was fantastic. Um Hitzel was also there. Uh just, uh, just too many. Um it's so hard for me. You know what? My favorite was Kermit the Frog. He was the best guest star celebrity that I saw there at Gridlock. That well, Kermit, <laughs> Kermit was your plus one though. That's 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 a cop out answer, but yeah, there were a lot of yeah. really. Do you know how many yeah. people total were there? I don't. Um, the last I saw when I looked on Start GG uh, for at least attendees. That's now that's before counting any walk-ins that came for like subs or spectators. We were at like seventy-five, I think, and I imagine that we broke over like one something. Uh, because uh, I felt like the venue was always pretty full. Fair enough. Well, again, from what I was seeing, it looked really entertaining. Uh, it's obvious you guys had a good time there, and yeah. that's that's what that's what they always kind of tell us to do. The 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 big wigs behind the scene make it make you want the audience to feel like they're missing out by not being there. And that's how you get more people to go out to lands because they are fun. It's, yeah. it's not fake. It's authentic. You guys are yeah. genuinely enjoying it. Um, and obviously in New York city is kind of a good location for that, that whole thing Absolutely. to kind of go down there. Uh, what's next for you? Riptide confirmed. Confirmed. Okay. I will be going to Riptide. So you will see me there. Um, going to compete. And also commentate if I could, uh, if with the forms not out yet, I'm going to fill it out uh, or if I will fill it out when it comes out, if it's not already. What about big house? Announced a lot later than I was expecting. So most likely not. Fair enough. Hey, you I'd can't... love to, but <laughs> you're not bro was bronze there was bronze at uh gridlock. That's a good question. I'm not sure. There okay. were so many people I was seeing and uh, speaking with that day that I lost track of who I, I even said hi to halfway okay. through the first day. Because bronze, I don't think, is allowed to miss it. I think bronze has some sort of like terms of agreement signed to where they can't legally miss a, a land event. <laughs> so maybe that That's was fair. the first one they missed. I That's don't fair. know. Um, all right. So... Go ahead. Oh, also, are you on a team right now? Your Twitter says you're an FA. I thought you joined yeah. like the Grillers or something. Uh, no. So my previous team I was on was KO Calamari. Uh, but we unfortunately disbanded, but all on good terms. Uh, a lot of things just came up that made it really impossible for us to keep going. Uh, so I'm currently a free agent, constantly on the grind, trying to find pickups if I can. I did have actually, I do have a tryout tonight, I think. So uh, the grind continues. Obviously, hopefully somebody picks me up uh, around the Div 5-4 area <laughs> or better. 
Well, maybe the uh, team that's trying out is watching this live right now. Go ahead and the content that you make. Go ahead and plug yes. yourself with that. You are uh, you're an up and coming YouTuber. You got a yes. beginner's guide into competitive Splatoon that has over eleven thousand views right now on YouTube. What do you got planned content wise, and where can people find you? All right. Uh, well, let's start off with the end one. Uh, where can people find me? You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Glitched Cactus. Uh, I do, do try to do streams as well, uh, both whenever I play in a tournament, or maybe scrims, uh, or of course, just casually at Glitch Cactus 1, the number one, because Glitch Cactus was taken, unfortunately. Surprising. <laughs> uh, content wise, that I do make, uh, I do have the beginner's guide. I also, if those who remember, um, when missiles were first announced back when we got that Splatoon 3 trailer, I was the one who made that uh, montage video of everyone's reaction that I think boosted over 30,000 views, which is pretty fun, pretty incredible. Um, my next videos I do have planned, obviously, besides the, so the silly Blue Chara one, is a um, 1,000 subscriber video, because I recently hit that milestone, which, again, I can't thank everybody enough for that, so thank you so much. Um, and I also plan on making a video talking more about uh, callouts, the importance of them, how to start doing them, um, and tips and tricks as well, because I feel like those who get into the competitive realize that callouts are such an important factor and uh, feel like they can use some help. Fair enough. The next time, uh, uh, let's go a year from now, mm -hmm. when you go back to Times Square, <laughs> let's get a low ink ad up in Times Square. Oh, you got Square. it. There you go. got it. You hit me up. I will fund it directly. Forty dollars. <laughs> That's uh, we yep. can find room in the IPL budget for a Times Square ad. I think. For I $40. like that. Dollars. Absolutely. Hey, um, when did you get back home, or was it a long trip or anything? Or... Um. So I live in New Jersey. So it's it's like an hour and a half train ride back and forth from uh, New York to the station near me. So last night I got back. I stepped into my home, I will say, around like one in the morning. Okay. Yeah, I traveled both days. I didn't stay in New York. I, I live close enough, so I, I just commuted. Fair enough. Well, um, enjoy the rest of the day. Get you some rest. Thank and, you. Uh, good luck in your tryout later today. Thank you so much. So that was Glitched Cactus coming in to represent uh, their time at the gridlock that was really good that was uh not that i thought that was going to be bad or anything like that but that was uh glitch cactus did a very cactus did a very good job on that one that was a entertaining interview for sure which is good i like talking to people that are fun to talk to and cactus was very fun to talk to that was some good stuff going on there wish i could talk longer but eventually we do have to go eat dinner and before we can do that, we got to blaze through some other stuff. It's time for the weekly recap. SOS number 115 took place last Wednesday. Essence is your winner for that event. Toadstool Cafe took second place in control. Red Sun rounds out your top three. Basically the same -ish roster on that Essence team that was at Low Tide City a few months ago. Um, I don't think Baja Blast was a part of it, but the Charger player Soon, T Soon, who wrecked my, uh, my stuff at Low Tide City, is a part of this Essence team that got the win right here. Registration closed very early on Tuesday <laughs> for this tournament. And... Uh, Still got over it. SOS, if they wanted to, could have over 100 players sign up for their tournament every single week. Um, it's just got to be caught, capped at 64. Hammerhead was won by Sakiyama Japan. Mako Bracket was won by Last Wish. And Lantern Bracket was won by Free Flow. Gridlock was a LAN tournament in New York that took place on Saturday and Sunday. The winner of this event was Sonder. Common Sense rounding out second place. That was a team made up of Hitzel, Power, Hunty, and Keen. Good morning. Good morning. Free Flow is the team that finished in third place. Hey, Free Flow, that's the team that went in one Lantern Bracket. Yes, apparently Lantern Bracket in the SOS is good enough to get you top three 
in gridlock. Did I say common sense? I did meant to say common senseless. Uh, still good enough to push Sonder to a game seven in a grand finals, not forcing a bracket reset. By the way, best of seven in a double elimination tournament grand finals is wild. We used to do it in low ink until we realized that uh, we wanted to go to bed at a decent hour. 13 teams played in this land that took place in New York. Two day event seemed to go over pretty well and the grand finals was not total garbage like most other lands that we see in this place. If you want more info on Gridlock, I would suggest why rewinding this VOD back 30 minutes. Yes, 30 minutes or so. Glitch Cactus gave a big review of his perspective of things on that. And that was your weekly recap. Sponsored by Kermit the Frog. Why is that a thing? I don't know. We're just going with it. Kermit the Frog, the official sponsor of today's segment of the weekly recap. Highlighted messages. Kermit called out Starburst 2, 1v4, anytime, any place. Didn't get Pico versus Power 1v1 and Y point on stream either. That is unfortunate. I'm pretty sure Car uh, Starburst would curb stop Kermit the Frog, though. Curb stop. Sune, and they won playing Snipe Rider. Did they really play Snipe Rider? I thought you guys were hyping up Snipe Rider as a joke. People are actually using that thing? What? Ha what? Competitively? All right, whatever. One more reason for a uh, Hydra main such as myself to retire. People are apparently using Snipe Rider now. No, thank you. Ugh. Oh, Click says it's good? All right, fair enough. Well, if Click says it's all right. In the right hands, any weapon can be good. Some of you are going to bust out Snipe Rider and Low Ink, and you're going to be very horrible at it, but so be it. A bit more than a main of SCU gets you cooler in two cycles of shots. Really? A bit more than a main of special power. Well, I mean, I wouldn't even know what, like... I don't know. I, I can't sit here and break down sniper gameplay, but I'm assuming... What what do you traditionally run on that thing? It, does it benefit from run speed? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Ugh. Little Squid League number 31 took place on Saturday. Didn't mention it in the weekly recap because, well, I wanted to hold a full segment on it right here. 103 teams played in the 31st edition of Little Squid League. That is a record. I thought more teams played in a previous Little Squid League tournament. No, this is the biggest Little Squid League tournament ever. Again, the previous record, I believe, was Little Squid League number 28 that had... 101 teams play in it. It's still same thing. As long as you're hitting that kind of like upper 90, low 100 area, then it was Little Squid League number 28 that had that. So the, the point being, a lot of teams are consistently signing up for Little Squid League, which is what it should have been always. There's no reason why Low Inc. should be getting close to 200 teams <laughs> signing up for that event. And the wealth not be shared to other events um, across the board. Little Squid League being one of those tournaments that should be getting some teams. I mean, they're letting in uh, top 32, some top 32 teams that make low ink as, uh, as overtime is done. Uh, if not once, at least twice that I'm aware of. No reason why this tournament shouldn't be a whole lot bigger. Now, did 103 teams played? Who knows? I'm sure plenty dropped. 
between here and there. I'm just going by the number that's on Battle 5. So, yes, uh, Epic Pikachu is saying 95 teams finish the group stage. But still, to go from 103 down to only losing eight teams in the group stage, 95, that is pretty impressive in its own right. I feel like we lose eight teams as soon as we say we're going live. The tournament started in low ink. Eight teams immediately. Oh, we got to drop our, our... We never had four players to begin with. <laughs> we, we just waited till now to let you know. Now that there's nothing that can be done about it. Uh, even more impressive, they went through 103 teams and in five and a half hours determined which one of them was the best team out of all of them. Five and a half hours. That feels long to you guys, but if this was a double elimination tournament that had half the number of teams that Little Squid League did, it would still take five and a half, six hours if there's a bracket reset. You guys who's pound the table say you want double elimination tournaments. I promise you, you are a team that gets eliminated pretty early in the double elimination stage. That's why you think the tournament's quicker in double elim. The teams that are making grand finals are playing five and a half, six hours if there's 50 teams in a double elimination bracket. Little Squid League has 103. Five and a half hours is pretty doggone good for that. For a one-day tournament, that's pretty impressive that they're able to knock it out. Now, I like to keep an eye on feedback that other tournaments get. A lot of praise for the stream for Little Squid League, as per the usual. The only feedback somebody gave that tried to implement something was suggesting that the top cut portion, instead of being single elimination after four rounds of Swiss group, not be single elimination, but double elimination. The Dio's won't say this, but I will, because I have nothing at stake with Little Squid League other than the fact that they give me a hat. And I kind of like having this hat. It's pretty nice. Do you guys want a 10-hour tournament? Because that's how you get a 10-hour tournament. <laughs> that's a 32-team double limb after four rounds of Swiss groups is insane. But that is the world that we live in, getting feedback of, hey, maybe you, what if this tournament lasted all of eternity? There's no reason for that. The real feedback that you guys should have given. Nobody gave this feedback. This is the correct feedback you guys should have gave. Is pointed out a slight flaw in this tournament. There were a handful of teams in one awkward team that lost one match in the Swiss stage, but because there's so many teams signed up and there's not enough room for everybody to move on into the top cut, a couple of teams lost one match and fell to silver bracket. There wasn't any room for them in gold bracket. That is the feedback you guys should have given because that is something that you got to look into. Now, if you guys know me, you know that I don't really care about people who complain about tiebreakers. The only people that complain about tiebreakers are losers. And no, I'm not talking about losers in the sense that you think somebody posted a meme on Times Square is embarrassing. No, losers as in you lost too many games. I'm on record saying this many times. I'll continue to say it. If you go four and two in low ink and you don't qualify for alpha bracket or top 32, I couldn't care less. You lost twice. You suck. Get over it. However, if you've only lost one match in the Swiss stage and you don't make it to the top cut, you got a fair argument. You got a really fair argument right there. No complaints coming from this way. Now, what's the fix to it? I don't know. I, I don't care. I got my own tournaments to deal with. I'm not trying to give, oh, here's what they should be doing. But that's the feedback you guys should be pointing out. If I lost one match and I didn't make top cut, I'd be pounding the table. My table's got a few screws loose, so I won't be pounding my table too much longer. But let's point it out. Let's point out some of the interesting matches from the group stage. We'll get through the brackets, and then we'll call it a day. I uh, don't know what's on the, minor, the dinner menu tonight, but I'm not going to figure it out wasting time talking to the idiots in chat. So let's get through it. Starting off, is it raining? It wasn't supposed to rain. Group A 
And this is the perfect example that I'm talking about here. The top four teams move on to the top cut. Last ditch effort who went three and one right here. Opponent win percentage not working out into their favor is not going to find their way. In fact, they're the number one seed in silver bracket. So let's look at the one match that last ditch effort lost. And it comes in round one. They lose two to one to shark bait. Ooh, ha ha. A tough loss for them in round one, but because their opponent win percentage didn't work out, all the other three wins that they got consistently from this one wasn't enough. Man, that's a rough way to go through the tournament, but still, win your games. It's hard to say that when you only lose once, but it pointed it out here. Nice win for Sharkbait, who has, uh, what was that, strawberry ice cream they have in their shark bait, uh, shark bait bucket here pesto chicken pasta for dinner you know what miss pop gun you told me that earlier um my mind obviously has been elsewhere unfortunate for me and group b everything worked out fine here uh the only awkward thing uh, actually no ink defenders as you can see here had a tie so they missed out if they find a way I believe this was round one as well. If Ink Defenders find a way to win this match and avoid being a tie, they make it into top cut. White Siege, interesting name, um, technically won this group with a 3-0-1 record or 3-1-0 record. Ties are the middle number in that equation. So it didn't really affect them too much, but if Ink Defenders can play this game three and win it. Now, why is this a tie? My assumption is they took too long. We've rarely tie things in low ink but if we go into your battle fight chat and you go over the time limit instead of slowing down the tournament for everyone because you guys can't get into a lobby with each other we'll just go in there and we'll figure out who's more at fault and if we can't figure out who's more at fault we'll just give you guys a tie and move on that's my assumption as to what happened here um ink defenders just couldn't get enough wins going forward to where it made sense for them to make top cut in group b look at it group c Everything fell in line here. In fact, you got overtime here who did not come out of this group unscathed. It is very hard to go undefeated in Little Squid League as of late. And overtime is not going to be any exception to that. They win this whole tournament, spoiler alert, but they lose to Eternal Eclipsia in a game three. It didn't really mean anything. They still made it out of the gold bracket, but still just kind of shows the parity in this tournament that you can win it by still taking an L. And all of the more reason for three and one teams to find a way to get into that top side of the bracket looking at group d here the one match that we want to point out is the team that found their way into top cut by winning a decisive game three and that is phantom manta beating sync lemonade who didn't uh, get, create a logo i don't even know what a sync lemonade logo would look right here but right now they're stuck with the default lion face now phantom manta had to win this one if they wanted to find a way in the gold bracket. They lose game one. They had to win two straight in a row to do it. And by golly, they found a way to do it. Knocking off Sync Lemonade down into silver bracket. And they find their way into gold in group E. Nicely done to them. Group E. And this is where I get my notes confused. Is this the Onigiri group? It is. Now, I had to Google what Onigiri is. I'm sorry. But I now know what it is. It's basically just a rice ball. I've probably eaten a couple of those. I just didn't know what they were actually called at the time. They get a 2-1 loss to the Moonstars. The Moonstars team who made gold bracket last month in Little Squid League. They go back to back getting based a lot off of this win that they got here, 2-1 over Onigiri. Onigiri made gold bracket in the last Little Squid League as well. So this was a touch ma tough match for these two teams. Ultimately turned up to be a decider between who made goal gold and who fell down to silver, as you can see right there. Group F. The match that we're looking at right here is another example of the awkward, oops, we went three and one, but we're the number five team. Now, Fool's Gold is a little bit different here. Fool's Gold in round one got the only loss that they had all tournament to Hook, Line, and Sinker. Hook, Line, and Sinker, a traditional Little Squid League team 
that usually goes on to make the top cut or the gold bracket or whatever when they sign up for these tournaments. The problem here is that hook, line, and sinker, after beating Fool's Gold, did Fool's Gold no favors at all. They went 0-3 in the other three matches, which plummeted Fool's Gold's win percentage. It, it, Fool's Gold's win percentage was really bad in this one. I What is it? Do I have to hit standings to find it? Yeah, their, their opponent win percentage was in the low 30s, or the high 30s. Uh, now, only four matches, so you're not going to see like these crazy accurate opponent win percentages. But still, I this is this is why Battlefy uses this as the tiebreaker, and it's totally fair that it uses it. Uh, but man, just, just a rough loss for Fool's Gold that ultimately cost them there in the end. Because there's just not enough room in there. So many teams signing up for this tournament. Group G... Last Squid Standing was able to ink out a spot into the final here, getting a 2-1 win over the team called MK, who we're going to be talking about a little bit later because they did good in the silver bracket. So this was a tough match between these two teams, and Last Squid Standing being the team actually fighting a way out into this one. Uh, last Squid Standing got gold bracket last. Um... I believe they got eliminated in round two. No, wait, no, no, no. I'm, I'm reading my notes right here. This is what decided the gold bracket. But last with standing, got seventh place in their Swiss group the last time that they played in Little Squid League going into silver bracket. MK, I believe, is just a brand new team, or at least their captain had only played in like a, a dual. What is it? What's the double, the, the, the 2v2 tournament? Dual Inc tournament uh leading up in this one by the way we get a lot of people that play in dual ink as their first splatoon tournament ever we get a lot of people that'll sign up for low ink and from what i've seen in little squid league the only tournament they have underneath their belt is playing in dual ink so dual ink brings in new blood to the competitive scene uh we definitely see that in low ink in uh other low level tournaments as well the last group I want to look at here, Group H, nothing really fancy going on here as far as like tiebreakers or anything is concerned. The one match I want to point out is a match that didn't really benefit uh, either team as far as making the top cuts because both of these teams made silver bracket. But Kit Kat got a 2-1 win over the Chippy Chirps. Now, Kit Kat is like a top five candy bar all time. I have a surprise though, like the number one candy bar was a Reese's cup. I thought for sure it'd just be the default Hershey's or something like that, but no Reese's is the top candy. I believe on planet earth across the board, Kit Kat's pretty high up there and the chippy chirps. If you guys know this, you guys should know this, uh, especially tofu who's on destiny troops who actually pays attention to the lore of, of Splatoon. The Chirpy Chips is one of the bands in this one. So the Chippy Chirps is, I guess, the uh, the evil version of the Chirpy Chips. Isn't um the uh, the person? Oh gosh, I, I forget that the name. The zombie looking person. Um, they're a part of the Chirpy Chip. They're the uh, the Chirpy Chips, correct? I'm pretty sure that's right. The zombie shot. Yeah, Harmony. Thank you, Rose. Harmony. Pretty sure Harmony is like on the Chirpy Chips or whatever. Give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that chippy chirps. Let's look at silver bracket. As far as silver bracket is concerned, and this is, uh, if, if you're wondering what this would look like as a double elimination bracket, it would look like something that is going to be what I'll never talk about. <laughs> Could you imagine it's, uh, it's 7 a.m. local time? And you're playing in grand finals of Silver Bracket of Little Squid League because you live in Europe. <laughs> and you get forced into a bracket reset. We're going into 8 a.m., baby. Now, the four teams I want to focus on here in Silver Bracket as the rain is really picking up outside. Let's do this before my uh, we lose the internet here. MK is the team that finished in third place. That's a team I was talking about that had this... Uh, that seems to be brand new to the scene. Don't really have much to say about them, but I see you right here beating a quality 
quality Pearl Essence team who ends up taking fourth place. This is a big jump up for Pearl Essence. The last time they played in Little Squid League, they got round one of Silver Bracket bumped. Got bumped out of round one of Silver Bracket this time around, going all the way to fourth place in a very congested Silver Bracket here. Of course, the two teams finishing in the top of this one are... Second place goes to Moon Slice because there there's another adjective we can combine with the word moon that hasn't been used before. By the way, there's a new high level team called Moonlight. How many do you guys I, I cannot believe your guys' infatuation with the moon. Everything you guys there's so many moon teams. And so many sun teams. What? Why do you guys love the moon so much? Moon slice isn't even a thing, but you still found a way to slip moon in there. Congratulations. Don't know anything about these guys. From what I could find, both these teams basically brand new. Like some of these players have been playing before in other events, but not too better with this one. Chaos. Chaos faction. What is this logo that they got here? It's just like a crosshair kind of thing. They at least got a logo. I don't know what a moon slice is supposed to look like, but fair enough. I don't know anything about these two teams. Seem to be pretty new to the scene. Congratulations to Chaos Faction for winning Silver Bracket. Come back into low ink. We'll see what you can do there. Lastly, we're going to take a look at Gold Bracket. The things I want to point out here, because there is some juicy Juicy uh, bits of information to come from this gold bracket here. A lot of heartbreak. A lot of teams coming in that have come close. Very close to winning this tournament in months prior. Found their way back in here. Let's start off with the team that finished in second place last month. And that would be Fatal Error. Who comes into this one looking to get back into the grand final spot. Unfortunately, they run into Joe Cephalopod Joe Starfish. Who we'll just refer to as JoJo. Because we've referred to them as JoJo several times here on the podcast. Because we've talked about them several times. Because they always pop off in this tournament until they get to grand finals. These are two teams. This is the battle of the bridesmaids right here. The winner gets to move on to face another team that has consistently failed to get things done in round four specifically of gold brackets here in Little Squid League. Scarlet Inc., who finishes in fourth place in this event has finished in third place last month, in third place the month before that one. So Scarlet Inc. has been playing in this third place match three months in a row. And I wouldn't be surprised, this is a 3-0 Indigo, I wouldn't be surprised if Scarlet Inc. was just like, T to hell with this third place match, we don't need another third place trophy, we're done. Scarlet Inc. falling prey, jo JoJo just breaking hearts left and right on their way to a grand finals matchup against Overtime, who JoJo has been in this stage before. The last time JoJo was here was Little Squid League number 27. So four Little Squid Leagues ago when JoJo was in this grand finals. And you think, all right, it's been four months. We've grown enough. This is our opportunity to shine. We can finally win this tournament, get this monkey off our back, and move forward in the low ink. Oh, it looks like Overtime had something else that they had to say about that. By the way, Overtime didn't have an easy run of things themselves. Like I mentioned before, they lost once in a match in the uh, Swiss stage leading up to this. Malibu Rising, they've been improving a lot. Overtime was able to beat them. Oofish. I talk about Oofish every single Little Squid League because at some point they got to win this doggone tournament and get done, get it out of the way. This seemed to be the run for them. They went undefeated in group stage. They went undefeated uh, leading up to this uh, round three match. And then they ultimately lost to the team that won the whole thing in overtime. A tough brawl for them but this was the best version of Oofish that overtime has been seen in a while but overtime bouncing back by the way they lost in round four so they're coming fresh off of a loss to steamroll their way through two four six eight nine and one going into this grand finals going up against an experienced number one seed jojo and overtime said nah bro this is our tournament to run. It's our turn to cut in front of you in line 
to steal this tournament from you. Over time, I'm a big fan of them. Why? Because, as I've mentioned before, their captain is the streamer of Proving Grounds. And I'm a big fan of Elemental, so I'm going to support anything Elemental has a hand in. Uh, obviously, there are more people on Overtime than just Elemental, and more people, obviously, who can do their best to not fall off the map while they're on stream than Elemental. And in fact, they got a, a damn baseball team here lined up they're, they're just one player away from challenging the uh the new york mets it might beat them at this point with how they've been playing um so this is a deep roster that was able to overcome jojo in six games out of a best of seven the last time overtime played in little squid league it was little squid league number 25 where they lost to inception trivia question who was the team that won little squid league number 25 it was inception the road to winning little squid league has gone through overtime not this time, though. It doesn't go to overtime. They get it done in regulation. Congratulations to overtime. Now, overtime's fine. They didn't need to win Little Squid League to move forward. They were already progressing in the right direction anyways. They were a team that was going that 2-4, and 3-3 three and three in low ink. But they're consistently getting those 4-2. and two. They're consistently qualifying for that top 32 round. This is just the confidence booster for them. This is just a... Yes, this, this feels good. We know what it's like to win a tournament now. We've tasted victory. And victory plays, tastes pretty damn good from my personal experience in anything in life. So this could be the thing that springs board over time past that beta stage and maybe into alpha. Are they going to be the next Octopi? No, Octopi was an anomaly. Not a lot of teams can say they can be the next Octopi. Regardless... Good job for overtime for getting this win. And uh, it's nice to see how they, they move on here. Oh, two more pop casts before the kid is born. We're going to get through it. We'll see you guys on Friday for the Low Ink preview episode of the podcast. And then we'll do a Low Ink uh, recap episode a week from today. And then I'm going on paternity leave. Between now and then. If you'd like to be a part of the podcast in any way, if you have any interest in being a guest host of the podcast while I am out, feel free to reach out to me in my socials below, Twitter, Mr. Underscore Popgun, Discord Popgun, uh, YouTube at 25 Popgun, Twitch at Popgun25, anchor.fm backslash Popgun. Who is streaming Splatoon 3 right now that we need to raid, that we haven't raided in a while? Uh, I don't think I've ever raided Brian, let's just do that. Boom. Get, sa uh, get safe. <laughs> Stay safe. Get vaccinated if you haven't already. And um, if you went to the New York land, don't wait for somebody to say that they've contracted COVID. Somebody did. They, they always do. Make sure you get tested and respond appropriately to that. We'll see you guys on Friday. Sign up for the tournament and uh, don't do anything dumb. And if you're feeling like something dumb might happen, maybe hold on to that tweet for like five minutes and think about it. You might just uh, embarrass yourself in front of the whole community. Again, 